There is no escaping the fact that stock market crashes do happen. It's all a matter of when. Over the years, my own portfolio has had to endure the financial crisis, the Dubai debt crisis, the European debt crisis, the 2010 flash crash, the stock market corrections of 2011, 15 and 16, various elections, Brexit and just to top it all off, a global pandemic which had one of the worst effects on my portfolio of all, dropping it 26%. For complete transparency, the value fell from 230k to 170k, but when this happened, I didn't panic. Instead, I saw great opportunities, and what I did helped the portfolio bounce back strongly to reach 340k this year. This is not investment advice. I'm simply showing you what I've been doing over the years to help you think about your own financial journey. I have a very ordinary job in the education sector, but I drip feed spare money each month into mainly UK large cap companies who pay reliable streams of dividends and I tend to hold for the long term. When I first started, exchange traded funds were not mainstream and my Barclays Smart Investor platform only allowed me to buy individual UK companies. Anything else would have required me to open a very expensive international trading account, so I simply grew familiar and accustomed to buying large UK companies. These days I've discovered the importance of ETFs and I hold a few of them to give me greater diversification. Some investors love growth companies and the hope their capital will increase and that's fine, I want that also. But what interests me the most is the flow of passive income. It feels real and not just numbers on a spreadsheet. If you are going to stick at this year after year, decade after decade, it helps if you enjoy it. I'll never forget the day when I crossed the magic milestone of £1 a day in dividends. A small amount, but I knew from that day onwards that this was not going to be a short-term experiment, but instead a behaviour that lasts decades. So what do I do in a crash? My first rule is to carry on investing no matter what. Here is a simple made-up example to show the effects of buying on the dips. In scenario A, let's assume that we invest in a company at the start of the year. It has a share price of a pound and we put £500 in every month. Over the course of the year, it rises to £1.10. We had been buying at slightly different prices throughout the year and at the end of the year, we would end up with 5,689 shares. I'll ignore other costs for simplicity. We had invested £6,000 over the course of the year and the value of our holding would be 6258 a profit of £258. Now let's look at scenario B. The share price starts again at £1, but this time the share price crashes, but we carry on regardless, putting £500 a month in. Because the shares were much cheaper during this fall, we bought more of them with our £500. Now let's assume the share price recovers, and just like scenario A, they finished the year at £1.10. This time the number of shares bought is 7,924, giving us a value at the end of the year of £8,716 and a profit of 2,716. Now be careful I'm making a lot of assumptions here and ignoring costs for simplicity. It is also very unlikely for a crash and recovery to be so quick. There is no guarantee that there will be a recovery at all, especially in the example I've given using just one imaginary company. But it can happen. In September 2020, a scandal involving the bank HSBC caused its shares to plummet to their lowest price since 1995. But a few months later, it bounced back 50%. During the fall, I spotted an opportunity and bought more shares. Markets as a whole do tend to recover over the long term, and when prices fall, it generally pays to be in the market. Here is a graph of the FTSE 100 since the 1980s. Plenty of ups and downs, but the trend is clear. If you are finding this video useful, please hit the like button as it really helps out the channel. Thank you. Rule number two, I always have cash on the sidelines. Although I have the full allowance in premium bonds, this is purely as my emergency fund and not used for investing. I keep spare investing cash in a separate savings account. Some would say it's better to be fully invested than have cash on the sidelines losing value. There is certainly some logic to this, especially in times of high inflation. I've reduced the amount of cash I hold dramatically this year, but I still have some ready to capitalise on bargains. Warren Buffett always has at least $20 billion available to snap up bargains when they emerge. In my last portfolio update in September, I revealed my performance so far this year, and with dividends stripped out, I could compare the performance with other indices. Although I'm outperforming the market this year, I don't expect to beat the market over the long term. 
The main reason for doing so well this year was having cash available to buy oil stocks when they had crashed during the pandemic. When I sense fear, I put a little more in than normal. It's actually a very difficult thing to do as your brain is telling you that things could get a lot worse and to wait. It is often said the route to success is simply to buy low and sell high, but in reality, when you are in the midst of a crisis and there is real money on the line, it's actually a very difficult thing to do. Here is the graph of Shell since 2010. In the early days of my portfolio, the share price seemed to be fairly stable at around £22, but then something happened. The price of oil plunged around the world due to oversupply. The resumption of oil exports from Libya and the birth of the shale gas revolution in the US had a lot to do with it. Shell shares plunged 50%. I knew oil was a cyclical industry and I thought eventually that it would be back in demand, so I started buying more. You may think that I was timing the market here, but I always invest regardless. I was simply adding more in than I normally do. Eventually it recovered, but because I'd been buying low, I'd amplified my gains. But it wasn't long after that that another opportunity presented itself during the global pandemic. The share price plunged again, but this time it was an even greater crash. As this strategy had worked the first time, I repeated the process and put more money in. Again and again I was buying Shell shares. But where did these funds come from? Well, remember that famous saying by Warren Buffett, Be fearful when others are greedy and be greedy when others are fearful. Well, I actually put this into practice. When the market is booming and I sense optimism in the air, I hold back a little on new money going in. I then have a war chest to use to snap up bargains in the bad times, when others seem to be running to the hills. For me, this was not something to be feared, but instead a golden opportunity. I was convinced that one day planes would be back in the sky and cars would be back on the roads, and eventually it did recover. But because I'd been loading up with shares when they were cheap, the value of my portfolio increased significantly. Since then, I've given my oil shares a bit of a trim to rebalance the portfolio. I say oil shares because I was doing exactly the same with BP. Barclays also crashed during the pandemic by a huge 54% and I was confident that they would eventually recover so I bought multiple times while they were low. The US market also fell significantly at the start of the pandemic and I used this as an opportunity to buy an S&P 500 ETF on the cheap. It recovered from this drop just five months later. When it comes to individual companies, I prefer large caps with strong economic moats such as the likes of Unilever and Diageo. These lumbering giants tend not to outperform in the good times, but they are very resilient in times of recession. They have strong brands and high customer loyalty. When I see price falls in these companies, I will not hesitate to add more in. This year I've been putting more into Unilever than any other company. The reason? I saw this fall as a buying opportunity and since the low point it's increased in price 16%. Be careful what you invest in however. In the early days I made a lot of mistakes and bought anything which looked cheap. Some of the companies were saddled with debt and a few didn't survive. Now Warren Buffett loves companies with economic moats. So which UK companies tick all his boxes? Well, according to the Morning Star, the companies would be AstraZeneca, British American Tobacco, Diageo, Experian, GSK, Imperial Brands, the London Stock Exchange, Reckitt Benckiser and Unilever. But please be cautious. Investing in individual companies, no matter how good their qualities, is far more riskier than diversifying using an index tracking ETF. Everyone's tolerance to risk and circumstance are different, so please make sure you do your own research. Now, as you are still watching this far, I'm going to share with you some of the basic rules I use when investing. I have an emergency fund kept in premium bonds, which I don't use for investing. I invest with money I don't need for any particular purpose. I always invest regardless of market conditions. The dividends always go back in. In good times, I become cautious and put less new money in. In bad times, I use the saved money to capitalise on market dips. I try to invest in large established companies which can weather recessions and setbacks. I diversify over a variety of sectors and regions by using ETFs. I invest for the long term and just like Buffett, my holding time is forever. Now, if you want to know more about my financial journey from the very beginning, including how I tackled my biggest debt of all, then I dare you to click here.